Hey everyone on YouTube, how's everyone doing? I haven't made videos in a long time because I've been busy with work and this project. Uh, this project took a long time to complete and basically it was a, uh, a project I learned a lot from. So this is a sword that the, uh, I might as well, I guess I could use his name Brett because uh, if you follow my channel you've seen him comment below so there's no secret to it. So this is a sword that Brett had asked me to make for him ooh, about uh, a year and a half ago. And I told him back then that there was a lot involved to make the sword. I wasn't ready. It was the first of this type of sword or knife or project. The first kind of project at this size and complexity. And I just wasn't ready. So I think it was uh, December of last year when I agreed to uh, take on this project. And from then till now, there was a lot of um, development, I guess. In, in figuring out how to make the quillions. I've never made quillions before. And uh, how to, you know, the whole design concept here. There's a lot going on, and I guess we should get into it next. Some of the specs first. It's, um, the design is uh, Brett's design. Um, and a few things that we developed on the way that we agreed to do and change on the way as, as things were progressing. It's, um, three inches in width down there down to about I think I have uh, a one inch wide at the tip the steel is S7 hardened by Peter's heat treat to uh, 5859 S7 is a great steel for impact resistance so if he would use the sword against something uh, hard um, it wouldn't shatter and that was important uh, the thickness of the steel is one third of an inch. It's what Brett wanted. Um, although it's a little thinner here at the, at the tang, let's say by the tang and the quillion, it's one third of an inch. In this area here, I did put something of a fuller in the middle and then put the rock pattern in there. Uh, and it measures about 0 0.285 up to 0.29. So I did thin it out a little bit by putting in the bevels and putting in the fuller. And it thins out, if I remember correctly, to about a quarter inch down here. So it is tapered both in the in in the width of the blade as well as the thickness of the blade. So it's got a nice taper to it. Um, the quillions are made out of aluminum, hardened aluminum, 6061. It's the same aluminum they use for in the aerospace industry. They use it for the lowers of ARs. It's a very tough metal harder or tougher than copper or brass uh, lighter much lighter than copper and brass which is important for a, a sword of this of this size the the weight and the balance um, so it's tougher and lighter and uh, I thought it was a good material to use the pummel also is made out of the same aluminum there's a piece of, of blood wood desert ironwood in the middle carbon fiber and separated by g10 liners so let me just, and sorry about the shaky camera, I've got to hold the camera and move it around. I don't have too much light today, too much sun today, so that's good. Because there's a lot of shiny parts to it and I would kill the, um, kill the video. Okay, so I've got white and red G10 liners. And if I move it this way, you can see that I did the, um, the hand a little differently than most people do. So this is not a con continuous white G10 liner. It's, you know, it ends there, and there's another one there that stops it. This is actually a car two carbon fiber rings and a red G10 ring. And I figured doing it this way might make this the handle more secure so it doesn't split down the middle. We've got this carbon fiber ring kind of holding things together. So is the epoxy inside and, and the pins inside that hold everything together. So everything is nice and sturdy. The aluminum is textured, and then I've got this special finish that I came up with. It took a little while to develop. Kind of makes it look like uh, like a wrought iron, kind of rough. Same thing with the quillions. 
Now the Quillians originally, Brett wanted the four circles that you normally see in Claymore swords. And when I was cutting these out of one piece and all this was cut up by hand, not by a, a CNC machine or a mill, everything was done by hand here. And as I was cutting them out, and this is the original face of the block of aluminum and same with thing on top, as I was cutting everything out and I was going to start shaping these, these four circles out, I showed him that what I've, how I got so far and he and I both agreed to keep the quillians the way they are because they look like scorpion tails. So now we've got scorpion tail quillians. The scorpion tails are also tapered from this end down to there, they're tapered. And if we look at them this way, they're tapered in this dimension as well. And my finish on the aluminum quillions. What I love about the sword is not so much the straight lines, which were very difficult to accomplish on something this long. Um, anything longer, I would not be able to cut in one movement. It is just too long to cut in one move. My arms aren't long enough. But as I run down, like hopefully the, the lighting is good. If I, as I run down the spine, the center, you could see that line is straight. The flames is something he wanted. Flames in the center is something he wanted. And rock pattern in the center as well. So I've got flames within the rock pattern. And that brown golden color is some of the residual um, color from post heat treat. Now that, this was interesting. The original project that Brett and I talked about, he wanted the red flames inside. Unfortunately, two things happened. Number one, after heat treat, the color of the S7 was not as red or as purple as I had hoped. It was actually more of a golden brown purple not a red purple as i'd hope as i've seen other samples of s7 come back after tempering so the color wasn't uh, exactly there in addition because of the weight of the of the sword before it was ground down this heavy piece of steel as it laid flat actually rubbed on the rock pattern uh, rubbing off the color so I was losing the color every time I put the sword down. Even if I put the sword down on top of something soft, like a piece of cardboard or, or a shirt, that was just enough weight to rub off the finish. And that was something that I learned in the process of making the sword. I did not expect that. Uh, I've done this uh, rock patterns for, for many, many knives. I never had that problem because the, the knives are light compared to the sword as I, you know, before it was being ground down or as it was being ground down. So that was something that I learned. Another thing that was interesting is, and mostly, most of the time when I'm working with a knife, I didn't realize the amount of force the belt and the grinder puts on the steel because if it doubles the weight of the knife, it's not a big deal. But when you're working originally with a five pound block of steel, <laughs> it becomes a 10 pound block of steel that you're holding. And when one side is sharpened, it, and you've got your fingers holding underneath it, you're going to end up cutting your fingers quite often. So that was uh, a few things I learned while making this. I did not expect that. Um, so I've got the flame pattern. I also have this, this hand rubbed finish um, in the gray area. And what I love about the sword is that as you look at it from different angles, different things seem to pop out at you. For example, the finish on the aluminum. If I turn the camera slowly from one angle to another, you'll see highlights popping in and out in different angles. And I, I hope it's showing in the video. It's not on the camera. But there's this tiger's eye effect. It's annoyance, I believe. And we have happening at the Quillians. It's happening with the desert ironwood. And it happens with the bloodwood. And I know I'm shaking the camera a lot. Ah. I also have that with the rock pattern and the mirror finish on the flame pattern. Certain things shine, pop in, pop out. Same thing with the finish. So let me just 
so from different angles it looks different i just love that effect it just attracts your eye constantly looking at it wanting to look at it from different angles because different things pop in and out originally flat ground to a zero and then i used a slight convex just to get that convex edge at the tip so flat ground both bevels both sides let me turn it around As you can see it's the same on both sides and a plaque I've got burnt oak on both sides and um, blood will run down the center he wanted footprints and I'll put in pictures of the sword on the plaque hopefully it it has a high gloss finish I also worked on the back and you know a lot of experimentation had to take had to be used had to be done in order to get it right this was a big project and uh, Brett's a really good customer so it was an important project a very important project both uh, you know if I screwed it up it was a would have been a big loss in terms of uh, money at my end and time which I really don't have a lot of. I'm not too sure how this is going to look against the striking white contrast. I'm not too sure if it's going to look good. But the same thing I've got with the, <clears throat> the burnt oak in different angles, you have different colors pop in and out. And it kind of reminds me of desert ironwood, so it matches the handle. Same thing with that. Well, let's bring the uh, sword over. The stand is only to hold uh, the knife up. Let's just switch hands. Nope, I can do it that way. Sorry, again, guys, I'm sorry and gal, sorry for the shaky camera. But I do have a slight overcast day, so the shininess is not gonna kill the camera. There we go, so this is Brett's concept, finally came to life. I definitely learned a lot, where are we? There we go. Learned a lot from this project. We're at 12 minutes. And uh, I'm sure most of you would agree, no knife video or sword video in this case would be complete without a paper cut test. So I'm gonna put it on pause. We'll try that next. Hold on. Okay, down here in the man cave. Let's see if I can get this in camera. All right, let me stand up. This is unsupported, you know. Sometimes when you see people do cut tests, they cut right by their finger. When you hold a paper right by your finger, you're cutting there, the paper has nowhere to go. I'm using the end, the very end, so it's like floppy, it's not supported. It has to be super sharp to, to cut and slice because the paper is not supported. And uh, very little chance of me cutting myself if I'm using the very, you know, the end of the paper. Let's try the other side of the sword. And you can see the paper is so unsupported, it's like it's just falling away rather than cutting. Again, the entire length. Other side, one last time. Some of these cuts are in. Okay, so that's it. Let's put this 
down. Okay, Brett, so when I took a look at the video that I um, that I made of the sword, this is the second part, I'm gonna put them, the both pieces together. When I did the video, I realized that uh, what I didn't notice before is that, uh, the camera's gonna shake a little bit, is that, uh, let's put this over here. Not too sure how the lighting is working. Camera stand here so you can see it better. Let's move this out of the way. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, let me see. I'm gonna lean over the camera. I noticed that there was a few drips in the locker that I used on the uh, shield and on the handle, so I've got to fix those drips. Um. I'm not too sure how the lighting is in this room. I definitely don't want to uh, shake the camera. Okay, I think uh, this is a long, long enough vid. Let's take a look at the paper that I cut. All right, everyone. So uh, again, I apologize for the shaking camera and not making videos in a while. My computer died and I lost some videos and I ended up buying myself a new computer. That's my new all-in-one from Lenovo. Uh, I'm loving it, still setting it up, still learning how to use it, Windows 8, and then I upgraded Windows 8.1 and no problems. I saw some bad reviews on 8.1. Ah, anyway, just showing off my new monitor, I love it. All right, everyone, so uh, this one is done and now to my next projects. My next project. So to all, have a good sword. Bye.